Hello friends, welcome to another post-processing tutorial. This video is gonna be a little bit different. I'm gonna take you through my editing process for an image that I've never tried to process before. And I've gotten a lot of requests about sand dune images because of the vlog that I did with Nick Page where we went out in Death Valley and explored the sand dunes, took a bunch of shots, and I figure we could go through Lightroom and sort of explore this image together. So let's get started here. All right, so some details on this photograph. This is Nikon D850, uh, 70 to 200 lens. I'm shooting this at 135, 135 millimeters, uh, one two thousandth of a second, f8. ISO 100. So anytime before I edit an image, I always like to just take a look and see, okay, what what can I do to this photograph to make it successful? Um, what needs to happen to make this a successful image? What do I need to change that's gonna make it better? First things I'm noticing, there's some flare, so we could easily remove those little flare elements. I think the image is a little bit muddy. We could probably bring in some contrast. We could increase a little bit of the glow in the background. Um, color shift, I think it's probably a little green, so maybe we could bring in some magenta. All right, let's start out with the magenta first. So I'm just gonna use the number keys, bring in some magenta there. Maybe even more warmth would be nice for the photograph. I kinda like how warm it is. Let's see what it looks like blue. Ooh, blue, that's interesting too. Hmm, I'm very indecisive when I process. Like what you don't see when somebody's posting a final image, or at least when I post a final image, is me sitting here for like an hour just deciding, oh, well, maybe I want the image to be blue. I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna leave it uh, warm for this edit. All right, so I like where the white balance is. We can use the backslash key to see what the original looks like. Yeah, that looks way better. Okay, so I'm gonna crop it now, and I think what I'm gonna try and do here is have it so this zigzag is kind of in the middle of the frame, and there's three peaks. So I just need to chop off what's on the right side here. Um, also, the lines in here are a little busy too. So let's go to the crop tool. We can just change the aspect ratio. Let's try um, five by seven. Now that's kind of an interesting crop too, with the two hills and the V's right in the middle, like right here. No, I think let's, let's have this peak right in the middle. And then you also have these two hills that kind of make the opposite shape. I like that. And then the zigzag makes a really nice pattern here. So I'm going to just start playing around with the sliders here, bring in some contrast, bring in the whites. Uh, but as I bring in the whites, I'm noticing they're affecting the top of that photograph. So we need to be careful about bringing in the whites. I'll have to do that on a gradient instead. Let's take down the highlights a little bit. You know, though, even the highlights, I don't like what the highlights are doing to the dunes at all. In fact, it almost looks a little better with an increase of the highlights to kind of increase that glow. Uh, let's see what the clarity does. And if I don't know what a slider is going to do, I'll just crank it all the way. So that's what the clarity slider does. Of course, it looks not, <laughs> not so great around the sand dunes with the layers, but um, I like some of what's happening here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in some of the clarity, but only on a local adjustment, like a brush tool. And let's see what dehaze does. That looks pretty bad, okay. Let's see what negative dehaze does. I actually really like some of that. I think we could introduce a little bit of haze into just the horizon to kind of bring up the glow. Definitely not to that extent. We could bring in a little bit of the vibrance. I'm gonna bring in more magenta too. I like the kind of magenta colors going on. Yeah, 
And I'm going to bring in the exposure too. All right, that's a good starting point. So let's go ahead and open up detail, bring in some sharpening. I don't need noise reduction since this was shot at ISO 100. Lens corrections, I always click chromatic aberration, remove chromatic aberration to remove the fringing that sometimes happens on the edges of tonal contrast. We don't have any here, but it's easy enough to just click the box each time. Let's enable profile corrections. So what profile corrections is gonna do is it's gonna remove some of the vignette and distortion. It doesn't really do anything for this photograph, so I'm gonna leave it alone. That's pretty much it for global adjustments. Now we can get in and kind of play around with the fine details. So the first thing is some of this flare down here. We need to do something about that flare. We're gonna use the healing brush. There we go. Remove this one. I don't know why it's selected up here. Could just select right here. There we go. Looks like there's a little ban bit of banding over here too. I wonder if it's worth just... Maybe selecting right here. It's like a really subtle flare, but may as well just kind of remove it. Okay, so that took care of that. Now we can go in and play with some more fun stuff. So I'm gonna try and reduce this brightness as best I can. I'm gonna try it with a gradient. If you have anything showing up, like right now it's adding clarity, just double tap effect, everything will reset. Let's bring down this exposure. All right, so we have detail in there. We can definitely reduce out some of this brightness. Let's go through, bring down the whites and bring down the highlights a little bit. Play around with this gradient. A little bit of dehaze, but then bring down the exposure. Oh, that's really doing the trick there. That looks good. Now it is darkening this area right here, so we could bring up the blacks, bring up the shadows. I think that did a pretty good job. Maybe we could add one more. And a little bit less of this. Bring down the exposure, the highlights, the whites. Uh, it looks like it's getting slightly muddy. Let's see if we can just target the highlights with this. Let's use a range mask. So what I like about the range mask is you can target the shadows or the highlights with your adjustment. So in this case, let's go to luminance, show luminance mask. Everything in red is what's getting masked out. So if we do range here, bring this up, we should be able to only target the highlights. Something like that. Play around with the smoothness too. Ooh. That made it kind of green. Let's bring in some magenta. See if this works. What about color? Uh, bringing in color actually does a good job.
bring this in a little bit less saturation on that and maybe just a little bit less of that red color not bad all right I think we're we're getting there with this one what else can we do to make this a better photograph well I like where the colors are going we could probably bring a little bit more haze out here in the horizon we could definitely brighten up these nice tones on the sand dune so let's just go ahead and do that now maybe let's use a let's use a, a gradient and I'm gonna go from the bottom Funny enough, I was going to bring in clarity, so it almost, it just like estimate, it pretty much just guessed what I was trying to do. I like what clarity is doing to the ridge, but I also don't like what it's doing up top of the ridge. Hmm, let's bring in some whites, some highlights, and let's bring down the shadows. So let's make this adjustment and try and just target the highlights. Let's see if this works. Okay, we're gonna use a luminance range mask on top of this gradient. Right now, this is the gradient, so it's showing just the entire bottom here. Let's bring this up out of the shadows. Come on, let's see what we can do here. That really targets it. I'm a little worried about this top area right here. Hmm. I like the way that looks though. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it down. You see how when I bring this up, it increases the brightness on the shadow area of the um, the dunes right here. I'm just gonna bring this down. Ah, you know what? It's only really going to work for this bottom area. I'll have to do a little bit more brushing up here if I want to increase the tonal contrast up there, which is fine. That's easy enough to do. I'm just going to use a brush, and I'm going to start targeting this area of the dunes. And a little brush right there. Let's bring in some clarity. Okay. So a little bit more selective. Now we're going to go back into that luminance mask show luminance mask that's our brush and I'm just trying to again just target the area a little bit more we can even go in with the eraser tool if we need to better okay now I'm gonna just take down the effect a little bit so that it blends more I think that's looking much better okay let's zoom out I'm gonna go through with the eraser tool and just get rid of one little thing that I see I just see a little bit of brightness on this top part I'm gonna use the eraser and just get rid of that Okay, I don't even know if you're going to be able to see that on the uh, on the YouTube video. Okay, 
I'm gonna bring in a little bit more haze down here. Let's use a radial gradient. And we're gonna make a thin and wide gradient here. And invert that. So this is where we're targeting. Of course, we're not gonna do anything this crazy, but that's where we're targeting. Um, I'm gonna bring it over here. And let's try some dehaze. That's a little intense. I probably need to be more subtle with it. We can bring in some contrast. Bring in, it looks like, it looks a touch green, like the dehaze is bringing in a little bit of yellow maybe. I'm gonna take a few notches to blue and then a few notches into magenta. Yep, that looks better. All right. Using the brush tool, I'm gonna brush along here. All right, I think we're almost done with this photograph. I may just bring in a little bit more contrast. All right, so here is our final image. I like the way it came out. This was definitely an interesting test to try and edit this image in front of you guys. Um, I like the way it came out. I think, you know, usually when I'm editing these things on my own, I will edit for a little piece of time come back to the image later, keep editing, I'll change little things, um, notice things I might need to change. And that, that's probably the case here where if I was to leave right now and come back, I might notice some things I wanna change. But overall, I'm happy with the results and I really hope that this tutorial was helpful for you all. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and let me know what you'd like to see in the future. Thanks so much for watching.